local election headquarters. With your host, Evan Onstott. This is Sunday Morning Matters. Hey, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Sunday. We got a pretty good show, starting with a rather frank discussion I had Tuesday with the Simplyman Devin Mathis. As you'll see, he is ready to talk about some of the controversy and accusations against him, even when my question was about something else entirely. Last time we had you here, we talked about that difficult decision that you made to, to vote to help extend the cap and trade program. Yes. And I know that was a decision that, A, you took a lot of flack for and probably still do from a lot of Republicans down in the South Valley. Uh, it was also one that you got emotional over when you were talking about it yeah. um, there in the assembly. How has that been for you? And do you feel like South Valley conservatives, some of the establishment, do you feel like they kind of threw you under the bus or? or it's, or, it, you know, I had a lot go on in this lot during the primary and yeah. got, got accused <laughs> of a lot of things yeah. and, you know, we kind of refer to it as a coup d'etat from some uh, ex-disgruntled employees uh, that made up some false accusations and, um, you know, recently it came out that, you know, I got hit for locker room talk and you know it was something four years ago and I apologized for it then and I apologize for it you know again today and, and I will continue you know and it's we, we were young we had a bunch of military guys in there and you know everybody was kind of riled up and you know things happen and you know I think the important thing really to highlight though is with all the investigations you know I got accused of sexually assaulting somebody and all of this stuff was found to be nonsense. You're referring to a blog post that, that came out and it, there was a victim never came forward. Police looked into it in Sacramento and decided that they didn't see anything that they could move forward with. So you're right, that went away. So, so after a year long investigation, yes. the, the final result is locker room talk. That that's the last thing that, that the assembly hits you with. Well, I mean, they did say, you call it locker room talk. They said that you used sexual, inappropriate sexual language to, to talk about colleagues there at the Capitol, which I guess can be locker room talk, but that's still a serious thing. Yeah. It's not exactly so, so what I'm, people... I'm, I'm going through some remedial training with the Rules Committee. Is that what it and, is? Because they said that. they disciplined you, and they never said yeah. exactly how. That's, it's remedial HR training. Okay. So what does that consist of? Hey, it's just going th back through the rules and everything else. And like I said, you guys, this, you know, this was four years ago mm -hmm. when I first got in. I mean, four years ago when I first got in, my first interview with Ray Appleton, um, and, and I still get a hard time for it. I, I said, uh, you know, he asked me, you know, Devin, what, what made you want to run for office? And I said, I didn't go to war for this S word, and, and I won't say it today. Mm -hmm. And Ray jumped up and bleeped it. I go, wait, what are you doing? He goes, you can't say that on the radio. I go, what you can't say on mm -hmm. the radio? And then I found out that there are certain things you can't say in politics. And all this stuff happened around the same time. And I've worked really hard to move past that. And I mean, it, again, it's been four years. And we've moved forward. And we've gotten rid of some staff that wasn't a little rough around the edges. And well, you've had two. Not, two former staff members sue you within the last year for yeah, a well, couple and, different issues. And, and they're part of, if you look deeper into it, they're part of the stuff that happened with the accusations and stuff like that. With the blogs. to that, yeah. absolutely. No, I, I understand, but I mean, I guess the, the question that people have, you're up for an election here in, in November, um, they want to know that the person that they're voting for, if they vote to re-elect you and put you back up, there's somebody that they can count on. That, that somebody oh, not because, you know, the ex-staffers, you know, they say that you have a problems with alcohol, for example. On the record now, would you say that, has that ever been a problem? I've, I've had probably five drinks in the last year, and uh, most of those were at my sister's wedding, so. Was it ever a problem in the Capitol? It's, I think the Capitol itself just has a big problem, and I think a lot has come out and come to light um, with the Me Too movement. And quite frankly, I mean, I stayed pretty quiet during the whole thing because I knew the stuff that I was being accused of wasn't true. And, you know, all of this stuff is paid for by tax dollars, all these investigations. And, you know, there's some serious stuff going on. And I felt that it was more appropriate for, you know, those women to get justice for what was going on. And I knew with my stuff, it was a political attack from ex staff. A political attack from ex staff, but based on the whole movement, things that have happened with you, would you say that? It has caused you to look more at your own behavior, introspection, oh, and maybe absolutely. have you changed the way that you do look absolutely. at Absolutely. You know? No, we, we've changed a lot with my office, and we've headed in a really positive direction over the last year. Um, 
And, and I like where we're going. You know, it's mm -hmm. more based back onto the community. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of really good community groups being put together. And, you know, I'm, I'm just ready to get back to yeah. work and keep serving the 26th district. Well, it's funny. This came up because I asked you about cap and trade <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, and how the Republicans down the South Valley, because I know that they were weaponizing all these different yeah. things. Um, do you think that you're, you've been able to move past that, though? And oh, yeah. I mean, sure it's, you're, it's, we're, we're, we're moving past that. Um, you know, Senator Vidak had gone against me, and he's mm -hmm. one of the hosts at one of my upcoming fundraisers. So, I mean, it's things are good. So, what, what's the big issue right now that when you're talking to people, what's the thing that keeps you going that says, "Yes, I want to keep running for re-election. I want to stay there because this is something that I believe in." I know, for example, the fires are a huge deal right now, and the the assembly's trying to figure out what to do with it, oh, yeah. money-wise, and how to prevent it in the future, and all that stuff. Is that something that is it's, keeping you up at night? The the fires. I mean, it, there's a lot of this that goes on, and. I think one of my biggest concerns is when we look at the state and we look at the mentalities of how to fix things, it seems like the democratic process is getting mixed up. It's, you know, a lot of it. I didn't go to war for this. Mm -hmm. um, and the answer, unfortunately, that we're getting from the governor and we're getting from the Democrats is that the solution is find somebody to blame and then tax them to pay for a new program. We have a record high surplus this year. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at things like fires, I mean, we, we did a lot of good things in cap and trade uh, to get more money to Cal Fire and do other things to remove dead trees and, and do a lot of that. And, you know, we did a lot of heavy lifting during those negotiations just for that aspect. But, you know, one of the things coming up, you know, Governor Brown wants to do, it's called Senate Bill uh, 870, and I don't know if you've heard about this, it's the 911 tax. So when it tax you, it's about $10 a year on your phones okay. to update the 911 network. Now everybody wants to update yes. the 911 network. I mean, to, to have a 911 network where you can do video call and, mm -hmm. and all that would be outstanding. But, but you're saying that there's enough money right now to be able to oh, do that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's... It, if you, but is there enough money to do that? The roads, you know, if the gas tax gets repealed, you know, is there enough money to do all these things? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the holes in the budget, um, and, and you look at how these guys do their budgets, mm -hmm. you know, you still have hundreds of Caltrans vacancies, and you know, we we went through this with Assemblymember Vince Fong. Him and I worked on legislation uh, last year to say, hey, we don't need to do the gas tax, here's the Republican proposal, here's how we can actually do this. Um, and of course, it was killed. But, you know, the, the problem in California is, it, California is, it, you ever had a lemon car? That you, you love the car, it's a great car, it's supposed to do all these great, amazing things. It, all it, my cars, sadly, have been very reliable, and I say sadly because they've been all very unattractive. So, <laughs> <laughs> so no, I've been lucky, but yes, I know what you're but, talking about. But, but you, you pour money into these things. Sure. And that's kind of California right now. We have these great programs yeah. that are supposed to do these great things, and we keep throwing money at them, and the program never gets better. Because, unfortunately, what it's come down to is we have programs to manage. Mm -hmm. We don't have programs to fix, and that's what we need is instead of throwing this money to manage you know, what's going on in the forest with wildfires, we could use that money to actually listen to what the foresters are saying. And they're saying, go in and harvest these trees out. Mm -hmm. Pull them out. Do these things. Yeah. And we haven't been doing it. And for years, we haven't been doing it. And you know, unfortunately, this is kind of the new norm. And you, you, know, you can blame it on climate change. You can blame it on whatever you want. That, that, that's the Democrat mantra. Okay. Let's blame it on something and find a way to have them pay for a program to manage it. And, and what's happening here is these are our tax dollars. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of something as simple as, oh, well, 10 bucks a month, you know, that's two lattes, you know. But that on top of the but gas tax. if it's 10 tax, bucks here, if it's 10 bucks there, this program. On top of everything program, else. I get, I get what you're saying. All right, the great thing about an election is that we get to have you on. We get to talk about these issues more and more. And so oh, yeah, I'm looking absolutely. forward to having you back. Uh, your, your challenger, Jose Segala, looking forward to having that as well. And, and would love to maybe get you guys together at some point, too, to oh, talk I'm, about and debate I'm the issues. I'm always game for a good debate. Assemblyman, thanks so much for being here. No, absolutely. I appreciate the time, as always.